Today is Krikan's birthday. And I don't know how old she's. I don't know, she's turning something 30. About seven. I asked her what she wanted for a dessert and she requested a pavlova. I made a pavlova like so many times in the past and we had that as a. That was like the dessert, the go to dessert for family events for a while. But we haven't done it in a few years actually. So now is the first time I'm back doing it, which is. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited to do it again. And the thing is, when I did it for family events, I always quadrupled the recipe. So I made four times as much um, as uh, the recipe says, which is not always the best idea when baking. I don't think it like turned out that well before. Like we liked it a lot. It was like very thin. Today I only have enough to make like one standard recipe. So uh, we're actually gonna get to taste it the way it's supposed to be. I don't have enough eggs. So I'm gonna use aquafaba, which is the water from a can of chickpeas. So it's a vegan pavlova by accident because I'm lazy to go to the store. Uh, but we're not gonna, we're gonna use actual whipped cream. It's not gonna be vegan in the end. But if you want it to be totally vegan, just use a vegan alternative for whipped cream and it's a vegan dessert. I actually don't know the reason why chickpeas works as su such a great substitute for egg whites, but it really does. I was afraid that I was going to leave a, an aftertaste or, you know, something of chickpeas into the meringue, but it really doesn't. I've tried it with uh, normal meringues, these chewy meringues, and it works perfectly fine. And I think it's such a great substitute because it's easier to have a can of chickpeas at home than uh, a bunch of eggs all the time. And this is what it looks like. And you just drain the chickpeas and use the water. Nothing special and two tablespoons of aquafaba, or the water thing, equals one egg white. Not one egg, but one egg white. So two tablespoons is one egg white. And uh, I had just enough for, uh, I had a little bit extra here that I'm contemplating adding it, but I was like, oh, whatever. And I just added it and uh, I don't think it uh, ruined anything in the end. It looks like this yellow color isn't that appetizing, but it will whip up to something beautiful and white. You will see. Just wait and see. Have a little faith in this process. I saved all the footage so you can see how it transforms from this yellow, not so appetizing mess. Not that egg whites actually looks that appetizing either. But you can see it's starting to foam just like egg whites do. It's really strange. I'm always amazed by that the process that, that this actually works, but we will see once again that it works. And I want to mix it until there's no liquid at the bottom. Like I, I want the whole, the, all the liquid to be this foam that we're creating. And I just prepared some sugar because we're going to add the sugar in in increments uh, once we have everything whipped. And my whisk attachment to this. Uh, machine is not really cooperating today so I have to fix that a while you can see here that it's all the the spokes have uh, re like rearranged themselves but it still works it's whipping you see now it's turning white it's fluffy we just have a little bit more to go and here look at this it's a stiff peak just like a normal egg white and I'm just grabbing the spoon to check if everything's whipped because I don't always trust these machines that they always get uh, what's at the bottom but it looks fine nothing at the bottom and we can start adding in the sugar little by little and this is going to change the texture of the meringue adding the sugar just like with egg whites so we have nothing nothing to worry about here but it's going to change it's going to turn into a glossier uh, version that first thing you saw was a little bit like bubbly and fluffy and this is going to turn it into uh, like a glossier um, texture and that's what we want for a meringue. And you really want to be careful with the ratios on this. Don't wing how much sugar you add. Don't leave sugar out, even if you want it like less sweet. Just trust the recipe because a meringue is really like a science thing, I feel. I added a little bit of extra white white, which is because I'm a daredevil. But don't do what I do. Just uh, trust the ratios and do exactly what uh, you're supposed to do. I, I, I added the I dared to add the, add the egg white because all eggs aren't the same size. So when you don't have a gram measurements for egg white, you can be a little bit brave. But then we have uh, what's special with a pavlova, which is going to make it like chewy. And it's white vinegar and um, cornstarch. I have potato starch, but I, I, I feel like they're interchangeable. Like, if someone knows better, you can please comment about that. Um, 
but I'm using, using potato flour because that's what I had, potato starch. You can see it's dusting all over. But we're gonna whip this in at the end when we have the meringue, when all the sugar is incorporated and uh, we're like almost done. We whip this in, they, they fold it in, but I was like, again, a little brave and whipped it in, but like at a, at a pretty slow speed and very fast. And now look at the texture of this. It's like chewy, it's, it's, not, a, it's not as fluffy, it's not as simple fluff as it used to be. You see, it has like a pull to it, and that's what we really want. That's uh, now we know that we have something good going on, and it's keeping its uh, height. So we want to make a circle, and they say you should maybe trace the circle on the parchment paper, but uh, I'm just eyeballing here. It should be like a, a, a normal spring form size, uh, and I feel like I probably know about. Uh, I, I should be able to guess the size of a spring form by eye and uh, yeah, you see it's 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 really holding its height which is a good sign when I've done when I've quadrupled the recipes before it doesn't really hold its shape as well but here we see it's like a like um, well I don't know how to describe it it's solid even though it's really fluffy and sticky and I'm trying to make the edges nicer because I don't think the leaving it as tears is that smart for when it's baking. I want it to bake evenly and maybe look a little bit nice. Uh, it's very sticky and I'm very excited at this point because I feel like this is promising. When it's this uh, jiggly, this is what you want. So we're succeeding with this one. At this point, I'm not really adding anything onto it. I just like touching it and I like the texture of it, but I should really stop, just stop. So we put that into the oven for about an hour or until it looks like this, ta-da! It looks really great. The crust is really good. You hear that? That's perfect. So we just let it cool. Let it cool and it looks like this. It's sunken in on itself, but I think that's perfectly fine. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, so, but I have to flip it onto the serving tray here and uh, you just have to be brave just just do it and you serve it upside down which is a little bit sad because it looks really beautiful but i don't know how uh, how else to transfer it to a serving tray and you're going to cover it with whipped cream and so you're not going to see the beautiful crust anyway and the rule is if anything falls out you get to taste it that's what you get to taste here you don't get a, a sneak peek before everyone else so a pavlova you cover with the whipped cream some people use um uh, a lemon curd also, but I've never used that and I don't really think that's necessary. I just think whipped cream and fresh fruit is perfect for a pavlova. It's, it's a summer dessert for me and what's more summery than fresh berries and fruits and whipped cream. So uh, I always use kiwi because I think that adds a, a sour element just like the lemon curd would, but you don't have to make a lemon curd. Um, and strawberries and I tried being like really cocky and cutting off the tops but I feel like that wasted too much of the strawberry so I'm, I started to do it by hand instead and then cutting those into the slices but it looks so vibrant and so beautiful I like to add contrasting colors um, which we will see in a second but we whip the cream and I was a little bit like I, I should have uh, I was a little bit um, cheap with the whipped cream I should have added more should have whipped in more but I'm also adding vanilla sugar which is a, I think a Swedish or a European thing at least uh, which is uh, powdered sugar with vanilla so we don't use vanilla extract but this powdered sugar instead and I think uh, it works really well because you don't always want an extra wet element into your things but um, whip the cream until it's like stiff but not too stiff but you don't want it too loose uh, you can see uh, here that it's like sticks to the spatula but it doesn't run off it uh, and it's not like too stiff and uh, when you feel like it tastes good it tastes should be a little vanilla I think so it's not just bland whipped cream and you just spread that out and you see now we don't see the ugly bottom part we just see the, the beautiful sides with the cracked meringue 
Um, and when I get to scoop things, I'm also very happy when I get to do this. So I do this for way too long. But then we just add the fruit. It's really simple. This decorating part, you can make the pavlova in advance. Just store it uh, in like, um, what do you say? Like an airtight container or something where you don't, like it doesn't get humid. So the meringue spoils. And then when it's time to serve, you just bring it out, put like do the whipped cream, put that on, and put on the fresh fruit and berries, and we're done. That simple and that beautiful. So here we have it, the finished product. What we serve to the birthday party, to the birthday girl. And this is how she decorated her table, so the colors of the fruit will really go well with the vibe of the party. Happy birthday to you! I'm gonna blow out the candles and uh, wish myself a happy birthday. Ouch. Yay! <laughs> I was a little afraid that this amount of cake would be too little for how many people we were, but it turned out it was no problem at all. It's uh, it's not a filling cake, but it was uh, just enough for everyone. Everyone got a big piece and was happy. Mm. 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 Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.